Tere ilmselt pärastlevana kõigile piraadisõprele. Oleme täna otse eetris Helsingist kampist, kus toimub osa üle-euroopalisest protesti meeleavaldusest vaba, sensuurivaba interneti eest. Oleme siin koos kahe väga tegija soomesega, edasi näeme ingliskeeles. So we're here with... Hi, my name is Teemu Ropponen. I lead Open Knowledge Finland, uh, a non-profit organization that promotes uh, free access to data and knowledge. Yeah, and I'm Ahto. I'm representing here uh, Electronic Frontier Finland, or EFFI, which is an affiliate of European Digital Rights. Uh, so we're defending uh, people's rights in the internet, digital rights. Thank you. As for me, pirates come to place like that to fight for our internet freedom. If you can this on this, 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 this. So to make it easy, I would have, like to ask you, what is at stake here? What is that we are fighting for? And what is, there's, how much does the result, the result depend on us? Okay, so so the, uh, as many many of the followers will know, the copyright directive, the EU copyright directive, has been in the works for some time, uh, and right now there are major problems with with uh, 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 with the directive, a proposed directive, and uh, uh, it could really change some of the very fundamental freedoms uh, that, that that we are thinking about. Uh, for example, the right the right to expression and, and, and so on. And really many of the founding fathers of the internet have been very strongly against the direction that we are planning on taking uh, um, right now. So while the EU has done a great job in, for example, protecting people's privacy with the GDPR, this move that we are looking at with the, with the copyright directive is not a good one. So, and yeah, and one of those who are criticizing this uh, directive and proposal is also the Finnish technology industry. So this is not uh, only some uh, activist citizen stuff. This is also part of the parts of the industry who are opposing this. And basically, this is about the future of the social media and uh, basically uh, the big uh, international entertainment industry co companies would uh, get to decide what you can publish in social media. Uh, so this is, of course, the reason for this would be, of course, that they would try to prevent copyright infringement. But, you know, come on, uh, that, that can't be right to do, do stuff like this, with, you know. And so there, there's basically two very problematic articles. There is uh, the, so, so you, can, you could call them Facebook article and uh, uh, YouTube article. The Facebook article would say how, how you basically put, you would put extra tax on sharing stuff on social media and the YouTube article would force uh, social media services to install filters by designed by entertainment industry. And this can only lead to bad things. And I mean, I, I under, completely understand the argument that uh, Facebook and Google are sort of uh, too big and stuff like that. But you, could, you should go against that with sort of uh, commercial legislation. Uh, if you're sort of monopoly, legislation related to monopolies and stuff like that, not through copyright legislation. And you said, uh, you asked uh, uh, what's at stake or, or how much is up to us. Uh, well, of course, it's the MEPs that we have elected who, who decide what we do uh, uh, with this directive. And it has been heavily debated uh, and it looks like it's going to be quite a close call. Uh, so we are, we are quite interested to know whether or not the pressure that all of us have put uh, 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 on the MEPs is changing the proposal towards something that uh, uh, is reasonable and acceptable uh, uh, um, as a whole. So now, indeed, uh, within the next few weeks um, is the time that we should really be contacting uh, uh, our MEPs and, 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 and making sure that they understand what's at stake. Yeah, for me, the proposal on 12th of July, was it? I saw how close it was, and then I actually realized that our internet that is at, uh, in danger. And next week, I'm gonna fight our Estonian guys that see like 
what the hell is going on there? Like, Anjib, get to work. You see? I've got a few questions more. What is the worst that can happen? What is, and what is the ideal solution that you are here looking for today? Well, I think one of the potential solutions is simply to scrap those Articles 11 and 13. Uh, um, let's see how realistic it is. Is, is it maybe that those need to be changed. But, um, but yeah, uh, uh, in essence, the, the, both the expression of the people, of the users of the Internet uh, uh, will be strongly hindered, but also uh, the new directive could actually affect uh, very strongly all the business around around uh, 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 like on the internet and online services. So we're not talking only, we're talking about possible changes to our individual rights, uh, but also very strong effects on, on, on business itself. So yeah, basically a small section of, uh, small section of all the business interests is trying to hijack the conversation for everyone. So yeah, this is not the business versus uh, the people this is some parts of business versus everybody else <laughs> so so sorry i forgot the original question so what is the what is solution, the solution that yeah. you are looking for for the ideal part yeah yeah well the ideal part really would be to scrap this but uh, but you know uh, any kind of making this more lenient uh, making this you know I don't really, uh, but but let's see, but let's see, yeah, but 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 yeah, we have the small victory already in in, in the summer when when most of the parliament voted for voting basically. They uh, most of the European Parliament said that hey, we want to actually discuss this and we want to be able to make counter proposals to this. And so that was the first victory. Now there is, I think, in 12th of September is the they actually start voting about the contents of the proposal. So a couple of weeks. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yes, and in the longer term, of course, the whole concept of copyrights uh, uh, may need to be rethought. That might that might not be realistic for now. Uh, uh, but in the longer term, we need to maybe cha change uh, our thinking more from a kind of copyrights and patents and IPR uh, um, based uh, thinking more towards uh, a world where you get compensated by how much uh, uh, the content is used. Uh, and, 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 and that kind of requires a bigger paradigm shift, but that's maybe not something for the directive itself. Thank you. For the final question, I would like to ask you, how much can we do? And who should we contact you? Where, like, can Estonian parliament members, Estonian government, Finnish government, can they do anything? Who are the ones that we have to reach out to in order to actually save our internet? Yes, well, I think actually within the government, uh, um, for example, here in Finland, many of the government entities have also been very skeptical towards uh, uh, the new directive and very, very critical. Uh, but in the end, it's the MEPs who have the call at the moment. So we all should take responsibility uh, um, to contact our particular MEPs and tell them to vote against these articles. Uh, um, it might be tricky because it seems that we will get the final draft very late before the call and maybe Ahto can say, say, say more about that. Uh, but now would be the time to influence the MEPs. So, yeah, basically the biggest problems are the French and uh, German governments and uh, some of the, well, basically the main main right-wing party in European Parliament, European People's Party, which includes most of the right-wing MEPs. So, so what would be the most effective would be to sort of, if you know uh, people in the sort of mainstream right-wing parties, uh, you should try to get to try to influence them because if if they flip from propo to, to oppose this proposal, that would be a huge win and that would sort of scrap the whole proposal. But well, but sort of all MEPs really do have votes, and we saw in the summer that we really can effect change. Uh, the summer vote well was already positive, and there were many people in many parties uh, who sort of 
understood the problem here and and so just normal any kind of normal activities organize events contact MEPs contact your own government because us all because the government of course also have a say in this it's in the minist council of ministers in the EU uh, so you you can influence your own government and then just uh, talk to your friends talk talk about this in the social media uh, visit uh, uh, save uh, sorry save your in saviorinternet.eu i think is the site <laughs> and and uh, visit that and and share stuff and and yeah and there, do you know the dates when when things are happening next uh, i'm not going i'm not 100% sure but i think 12th uh, september was the next vote so yeah. there is like a yeah yeah so so there's a couple of weeks to time to really make the change and it can be done so yeah, until 12th of September we have time to still fight. For the last question I would still ask you guys if the proposal would be cut, if it would be scraped, if it would be destroyed and buried under the ground, who would benefit from it? Well, I mean, first of all, I don't think that, uh, that, that it will be completely uh, uh, scrapped, so I think that I think that uh, um, some form of it probably will pass. Maybe, maybe, maybe after knows, after knows better. Um, I think for some of the regulation, it's quite difficult to to estimate sometimes that who is really, really affected by it. Uh, um, I think here mainly some uh, a, a small group of copyright owners is, is is ones that can benefit. But even with the kind of for example, these link tax uh, um, trials that have been tried out before, uh, the results have been a little bit surprising. Uh, um, so right now it looks like this draft is not very well prepared, so we don't really know the effects well enough. So yeah, what I would start with, I would scrap this, di this directive and proposal and go back to um, proposal by the European Parliament, which was accepted by a huge ma majority and, and I think 2015. There was this uh, process of evaluating how well the copyright directive has worked and the European Parliament voted on it and what should be, how it should be reformed. And that, that was actually a very good proposal. There was increased users' rights, uh, increased focus on user-generated content and stuff like that. and and the reform proposal should have be should have been based on that but the commission scrapped the whole european parliament opinion and made their own proposal which was really bad so go back to 2015 go back to reading that opinion on copyright reform by the european parliament start with that going a little bit further how could we actually actualize that European Parliament would go back to the original piece of legislation? Well, basically you need, you need to uh, oppose this directive, because if this, this directive gets passed, then during the next 10 years there, there probably nothing will be done, because this is like once in a 10 year thing, the reform, the corporate directive, they have other issues they have to decide on, so so they want to get this off the table, even if it's bad, it's still, still off the table, so basically you have to force this to stay on the table by repealing the proposal. So, I'm going to go to Helsingist, Munosal, Pihapaval.